morning. It's good to see everyone out this morning to receive from the Lord and his word and sacraments. If you have your bulletin announcement, I want to pass a couple things along to you just to keep you informed. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the newsletters for the month of November are out. Now, the new place for those newsletters is we are not putting them in the boxes, but we're putting them on that d- display center as you're going into the uh, lobby area, we'll say. Uh, there's those... Um, uh, tables and then all against the wall we have all the brochures we have the newsletters for November uh, on that wall they're also on the church website and on the Facebook page as well so as a way to kind of keep you informed of the activities here so pick one of those up if you'd like or check online to grab the newsletter for no- for November excuse me uh, today you can see a uh, business as usual but we have an elder meeting following the second service so keep that in mind to those elders here in the church Tuesday men's Bible study ladies Bible study on Tuesday and Wednesday, we continue with confirmation and evening prayer uh, this Wednesday. Uh, next Sunday, you can see there's a safety committee meeting as well. And uh, just a brief announcement. Due to COVID-19, uh, close contact, uh, the church office hours are modified. And so, um, long story shoot, Ruth, our, uh, long story short, excuse me, Ruth, our administrative secretary, uh, one of her family members uh, was tested positive for COVID. The rest of the family did not test positive, but due to that, there's a 14-day close contact quarantine. So Ruth is available at home. We took one of the computers from the church office, brought it to her house, left it on the outside of the door, and she got it all set up. So she has an office at home doing a lot of work. And so I am back and forth with uh, dropping off bulletins and getting them folded and so forth. But the church office will be having limited hours as I'm going to be coming and going throughout the week here. So if any needs arise, please call the church office. You can leave a message. Ruth is checking in on messages daily. And you can send her an email or give me a call at the, uh, my cell phone as well. So just a little bump in the road with that, but otherwise we will keep uh, trucking on it, I guess as they say here, as a church, uh, ministering the word and sacrament. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time that I may have overlooked? Well, today you see from the colors up front, it is white, which means it is All Saints Day. And perhaps we might be doing something just a tad bit different during the prayers of the church We will be remembering uh, those who have departed uh, this past year, members here at St. Paul's. And I'd like to make that a practice every year during All Saints Day that we remember those who have passed away. Uh, Those who are members of our church, now obviously we have more than just the members of the church, but we want to recognize uh, the funerals that we've done here this last year. So we'll have a brief moment of silence as we mention their name during the prayers of the church. But it's also time for us just to reflect on those uh, in our family, uh, those other baptized uh, blood-bought saints in our family uh, that have passed this past year as well. And remembering that they are part of that great multitude uh, that will be someday uh, before the throne and that we will be hearing about in the book of Revelation here today. With that in mind, our opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 672, hymn number 672.
continue, continue on the top of page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the introit printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me not be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake you lead me and guide me. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The first reading for the Feast of All Saints is from Revelation, from the Revelation to St. John, chapter 7. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor the scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God? And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. (laughs) Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I ask you to please be seated for the hymn of the day. Hymn number 677. Hymn number 677.
may be seated. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, it is pretty obvious that we as a society are reaching complete exhaustion. Some are saying that we are approaching a mental health breakdown in America right now. I think they're right, to be honest. I think they are indeed right. Ask anyone if they're anxious or depressed or exhausted right now, and you will find that it is quite prevalent among those in our society. People are tired. They're anxious. They're exhausted. In fact, recent statistics show us that one out of three Americans struggle now with the challenges of life, right here and right now. Now, the reason why is quite obvious. It is 2020, right? 2020, the year of all years. Over the last seven months, people have lost their jobs, and they've been locked down, and they've been quarantined. Schools have been closed and then opened and then closed. Who knows what's next? Churches have been closed and opened and closed. We were once told not to wear masks, and now we're being told to wear masks. And the rules with social distancing, yes, those rules about social distancing are coming up every week. We need to keep three feet away, no six feet, no ten feet. COVID-19 infection rates have spiked, and then they have flattened, and then they have spiked yet again. We're told to be of good cheer because we did not have 2.2 million deaths due to COVID, but we're also called to be sober and alert because COVID will take another 200,000 lives by December. Well, and to make things worse, drug use and drug overdose are up drastically in our culture, especially here in Minot right now. And to make things even more worse, there are politics. Let's not get started with that. Everyone is upset with politics in an election this week. And let us not forget that there are hurricanes to the south and wildfires to, yes, the west, and riots to the east. And so, my friends, we're fatigued. It makes sense. We're depressed. We're lonely. We're full of despair, mainly because of the pandemic. Well, doctors and psychologists, they're noticing this too. They've actually, get this, they've actually coined a term for our fatigue. They call it, get this, pandemic fatigue. You heard that correctly, pandemic fatigue. Now, what is interesting is that even though pandemic fatigue may be new to many people for, really, how often in our lifetime do we go through a global pandemic? Well, it is really not that new according to history, the history of our world. Indeed, everything that we have experienced in 2020 is not really new. It has happened before, and it will continue to happen year after year beyond our lifetimes. Remember that history, well, it repeats itself. Yesterday's problems are tomorrow's problems, and contrary to what some say, this life under the sun is not getting better and better and better. Life under the sun is the same old grind that has always been. What happens today happened before. History repeats itself. Now, dear friends, there is a painful reality. Indeed, there's a painful reality that we try to avoid in this life. And that reality, <clears throat> excuse me, and that reality is that this life under the sun, this life under the sun, the life here and now, is full of trials. It's full of afflictions and pain and tears. And the painful part of that is that there's nothing that we can do about it. The old theologians used to call this life that we experience under the sun the valley of tears. The Apostle John, we heard the Apostle John talk about this life as the great tribulation. I think these are very fitting terms for life, perhaps even better than pandemic fatigue, the valley of tears, the great tribulation that we all experience. Now, when we say valley of tears or we say the great tribulation, we refer to this life that is full of difficulties. But again, we do not like to admit that this life has problems. Problems, they make us nervous. They make us uncomfortable. They make us uneasy. And so if there's one thing that 2020 has done right and done well, it is this. 2020 has shown us the real nature of life, that life is not easy. 2020 has not allowed us to escape the comfort of our houses or the distractions of those screens we put in front of us, our imaginary bubbles that we live within. 
Yes, 2020 does not allow us to escape and pretend that we're okay. 2020 has not allowed us to pull the sheets up over our head, as they say, or put our heads in the sand. 2020 has brought us to the reality of what our reading from the book of Revelation addresses. You see, in our reading from the book of Revelation, that first reading, the epistle reading, we hear about a great multitude of people who made it, get this, through the great tribulation. Keep in mind that this great tribulation is not some distant future event that has yet to come, and this great tribulation is not some historical biblical event that happened in the past, but instead this great tribulation is the present valley of tears that every Christian of every generation on every continent experiences through their daily pilgrimage on earth. You see, the Apostle John, he uses the imagery about this valley of tears that we live in. He uses this imagery of his words in this text from today. He says that there is hunger and thirst and the sun and scorching heat. This imagery, it shows us that this life is tough and it is full of hardships and trials and affliction and pain and weariness. This great tribulation, this great valley of tears. No food leads to weakness and an aching stomach. No water leads us to a parched mouth and dehydration. The sun burns our skin and the heat makes us tired. All, again, imagery that shows us the wear and tear of life. Again, this imagery is used to describe not only the physical hardships that we experience in this life, but also those emotional struggles, those struggles of the soul, longing to be spiritual whole in a world that has gone wrong. But what does John mean when he says that this great multitude came out, yes, came out of the great tribulation? Who are these people who have made it through the great tribulation, who have made it through this valley of tears? Well, dear friends, when the Apostle John, when the Apostle John sees that vision of millions upon millions of people covered in white, it's just such a great vision, covered in white, before the throne of God, get this, he sees you. He sees each and every one of you. Let me repeat that. When the Apostle John sees that vision of millions of people covered in white who have made it through that great tribulation, he sees your face. He sees you. In that future vision, he sees you in that crowd dressed in white. Baptized saints, is 2020 a challenging year? Yes, it is. We all have to admit that. Will you make it through 2020? Yes, you will. Even if you have pandemic fatigue. And will you make it through the hardships of 2021? Yes, you will. And how about the troubles of 2022? Yes, you will make it through those too. You see, every year that we live in this life under the sun, in this valley of tears, through this great tribulation, brings with it hardships and trials that we all experience. That is to be expected. That is the nature of this valley of tears. That is the nature of this life under the sun. In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties and have suffering But take comfort. The Lord Jesus has conquered this world. He promises you that you will come out of this valley of tears to the glorious new creation. And so, baptized saints, if you are tired, if you are weary, if you are worried, if you're full of suffering, lift up your chins. Yes, lift up your chins this day. Open your ears. You will make it through 2020. Because you are a part of that great bunch of forgiven sinners of the past generations, the present generation, the future generations who Christ will gather together. That great bunch of forgiven sinners clothed in the blood of the Lamb, made white in his forgiveness of sins. Those great saints that he will gather to himself at the very end of time and place in glory. John's future vision is not... Keep in mind some ethereal, fictitious dream, but a glimpse of your future. It is a glimpse of your future. It is a glimpse through all the pain and the suffering, that veil of tears that we find ourselves in. It is a glimpse through all of that into the reality of your future. Yes, your future. 
Take courage right now, baptized saints. In spite of everything else, take courage right now. Through Jesus, you have been washed clean of all of your sins. You are baptized into Christ, which means that there's no condemnation for you. You're baptized into Christ, which means that you're given a robe of righteousness that covers all of your guilt. And as a blood-bought, baptized Christian, the Lord Jesus promises you that he will not only sustain you in the present reality of 2020, but he will sustain you through this veil of tears. And you will have that glorious new creation to look forward to. And this glorious new creation, let us keep in mind, this new creation, this glorious new creation that John sees us as a part of in some point in the future, that great last day, that glorious new creation is not some dreamy plastic reality where you, you somehow bounce on heavenly clouds as a misty spirit. It's none of that nonsense. Tragically, some people's view of heaven and glory are so lame that it makes this present valley of tears quite appealing. No, John does not advocate or say that you will be some misty, ethereal spirit bouncing on heavenly clouds. That is not how it is. John says that the glorious new resurrection and that glorious new creation that you will be part of someday has no more hunger No more tears, no more scorching heat, and no more thirst, but shelter. That is safety. In other words, in the glorious creation that you will be a part of, there will be no more anxiety. There will be no more depression, no more exhaustion, no more distress, no more affliction, no more loneliness, and no more pandemic fatigue. Your body that takes a beating in this life and ends up scattered into a bunch of dead particles in the ground. And your soul that suffers much stress and chaos in this life, that body and that soul, they will reunite at the end of time and be ushered into the glorious new creation. You, right now, your entire being, your body and soul together will resurrect from the grave someday. But get this. You will be incorruptible. You will be powerful. You will have the very same body that you have now in the glorious new creation, but a body without physical defects, a body without the traces of age, the body without the traces of suffering, since all of these are a consequence of sin. And as we know, in the glorious new creation, there is no sin. Body and soul reunited, perfect. And it is worth noting again, You will no longer be in this valley of tears. The Lord promises to see you through this great tribulation out of this valley. He will see you through 2020, and he will see you through death. Yes, he will see you through death, most most certainly. And so, my friends, whatever else 2020 might bring, we shall not be caught off guard. It shall not alarm us, and we shall certainly not waver or fear for John has already seen, in, uh, seen us in his vision. He has seen us in that vision, in the future of the glorious resurrection. The Lord will see to it that we will come out of 2020. He will see to it that we will come out of the great tribulation. This, my friends, is most certainly true. Indeed, it is most certainly true. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I ask you to please stand. Let us confess our faith as expressed in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Standing with the great multitude of saints before the throne of God and the Lamb, let us join in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving to the God of our salvation. Mighty and eternal God, we remember before you the saints 
and martyrs of every generation who trusted in you in the face of terror and threat. Grant that when facing persecution and trial in our own day, we may be steadfast in faith. Deliver those whom you have washed in baptism, granting the new life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty and eternal God, we beg your grace that our lives may be ordered by your commands, and we ask you to bless those who govern us in your name. Bless our president, the Congress, our governor, the legislature, and all local officials, that pursuing a path of justice, they may act with humility and honor for the good of all people. Give wisdom to all who vote this week and bless its results, that our nation may elect our leaders peacefully and orderly. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty and eternal God, you have made us your children, and you continue to guard us as your own possession. According to your will, give healing to the sick, calm to the troubled troubled in mind, and patience to those facing sorrow and struggle. Give health and peace to our nation. Here's especially on behalf of Reverend Tom Eckstein, Carl, and Charlotte, Connie, Darcy, David, Aaron, Gloria, Janice, Jeff, Janice, Joellen, Marilyn, Melissa, Philip, Rita, Sue, Tim, Tom, the family of Myrtle in her recent loss, as well as Justin. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, O Lord, in joyful expectation of the resurrection to eternal life, we remember those who rejoice with us in the Lord Jesus Christ, but upon another shore and in a greater light, our departed family and friends who have gone before us in the faith, and all those who are in our hearts and minds this day. Yvonne, Brad, Sharon, Norman, Dennis, Dolores, Mike, Lucille, Melvin, and Myrtle. Lord, in your mercy, mighty and eternal God, bring us to the da- that day when every tear shall be wiped from our eyes and we shall hunger and thirst no more. Knowing you now by faith, we yearn for the day when we shall know you face to face. Until the dawn of that eternal day, keep us in your faith and fear through our good shepherd and Lord, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for our offering music. As a way of reminder, the offering can be conducted in the very back of the sanctuary, uh, turned into the church office, or conducted online.
as we continue to the service of the sacrament on page 160, we continue in repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Center, we still invite you to please come forward, kneel, and cross your arms to receive a blessing at the rail this morning. If you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift of the altar, please talk to me after the service about membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. In the communion of all of your saints gathered into the one body of your Son, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we, encouraged by their faith and strengthened by their fellowship, may run with perseverance that race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
ask the congregation to please stand as we thank the Lord on page 164. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Congregation may be seated for departing hymn, hymn number 676. Hymn number 676.
quite amazing to think about that when John sees that vision of the future, he sees you, which means that you will endure. Christ has well, Christ will sustain you in this life. He will sustain you through the rest of the year and in through death, calling you out of the great tribulation, all this valley of tears unto himself. Oh, what a glorious day that will be free from all the pain and toil of this life to be with Christ. Press on, dear saints. Be steadfast. You have Christ. Amen.